Have you ever watched a movie and you're thinking, I want more, but I also want less? That is what I felt when watching this movie. Chase Lee Hockey here with the Blue Futon reviewing Kill Book Soon. What's it about? Pretty simple premise, actually. We have a mother who's the most badass assassin in Korea. She has a daughter, however. How is she going to hide this assassin wife and also take care of her daughter? But also look at this MK organization and trying to figure out should she retire? Should she stay? Who's trying to kill her? Will she actually do some of the killings. So, did I like this film? Okay, like I said, this is one of the movies where I wanted more, but I also wanted less. And what do I mean by that? When the action set pieces were going off, they were fucking phenomenal. Just like how I said in the India Vikram video or review last year, the crazy robot arm camera, I think they utilized it in this film when it was this Korean man facing off against the Russians. It was badass, it was like Kingsman-esque, like I said, versus Vic Ram-esque. It was freaking off the walls, bonkers. It was bloody. It was brutal. I enjoyed the living shit out of it. Also, there's a scene where they're in a restaurant. Freaking badass. Also, there's a blood effect with eyes. Phenomenal. I mean, that is the best blood effect I've seen come out of someone's eyeballs in a movie. It was that good. I couldn't tell if it was CGI realistic. It's got to be some CGI, right? Unless how that's real. I don't know how they did it. It was that fucking good. But however, with this movie being over two hours and 15 minutes, some of the dialogue was draggy. Some of the relationships with the mother and daughter just didn't go anywhere. And when you have a protagonist wearing a Che outfit, he killed millions of people. Why are you promoting this communist? I'm pretty sure it was a commie, right? I'll do some research real quick. And I was correct. He's a communist and he was part of the Marxist party. So if you really want to promote him, I can't fuck with a movie that really does that. So anyway, let's talk about the positives. And I already talked about the positives. The acting and when the director wants to make a good action movie, he can. When the actors are in the action, it's phenomenal. Gunplay, knife play, uh, butt of a knife, punches, kicks, rope. Anytime there's a badass fight sequence, I am intrigued. This director completely had Michael Bay influences, especially with the spin camera in the restaurant. If you, you know for a fact that as a Michael Bay reference, he did that in Bad Boys, did it in Bad Boys 2, did it in Transformers, did it in uh, Pain and Gain. That is his style. That is his remote thing. You could tell there was 100% influence for him to do that. Also, like I said, the technical aspect of when shit was going down was phenomenal and freaking amazing. Some good dialogue, but with this movie, it wanted to be like a Kill Bill. It wanted to be a Michael Bay movie, but it also wanted to tell a story with his father, or sorry, with this fatherless relationship as also, which you kind of know who the father is, but it's a mother-daughter relationship. And when that was on screen, it fucking dragged. There would be a scene where we're in the house talking, and it is like, let's go. There's too much gaps between the dialogue. There's too much empty space. Let's move on. This pacing, they, you need to take out at least 20 minutes of this movie. Easy. It would be a way better, way crisper movie. And like I said in the beginning, when you're promoting a communist Marxist in your movie, I don't know why you're doing it with South Korea because you know what North Korea is like. I mean, there was a war in the 50s about it, and you know for a fact there's so many defectors. So why are you kind of promoting this guy? It just doesn't make no fucking sense. All these, you know, countries with riches and developed nations think they want Cuba, North Korea, China. And when I say China, I'm not talking Beijing, Hong Kong. I'm talking about, well, yeah, yeah kind of they're communists. They're literally in their name. But yeah, one thing you come with that dialogue. And there's this thing when it does do some action set pieces where it's like she could do like different, like, multiverses like oh am I going to die this way what if this happens and that kind of took me out of the movie because she's so good she could see what outcomes can happen I just don't know if that really fleshed out as well as the filmmaker wanted it to 
So this got me in a weird dilemma of do I say this is a this is a recommendation or not? Because like I said, when the action is on screen, I enjoy the living shit out of it. When the action wasn't on screen, there was some fun dialogue with them trying to like do a crime scene and everything like that. But when it came to that daughter mother relationship, it went nowhere. I don't know what it was trying to be. It was trying to be this progressive bullshit that just didn't work for me. So I, I, I would recommend this movie like top tier, but it is getting dropped down because of the dialogue, the pacing, and just the bullshittery shenanigans that didn't need to be in this movie. But when you had that Michael Bay, Vic Graham, robot camera action, action set pieces going, it is balls to the wall fucking fantastic. So Kill Boku will receive a 3 out of 5 blue futons, which equals at 60%. So see the critics' news scores gave this one. So you have critics at 81% with 31 of them. Audience score at 84% with over 100. Here's critic consensus. Although its impact is blunted somewhat by meandering length and some cheesy visual effects, Kill Boku soon remains a pleasing punch to the gut for action fans. Sure, I agree with half of that. Like I said, you could tell... The cheesy effects when it came to the multiverse. And then the meandering length. Completely agree. You're just like, you're dragging. The storyline between the mother and daughter needs to stop. So anyway, 81, 84, 60. Chase out with the blue futon. Like, comment, subscribe. One of the things, Bouton Topi, you. Bouton, thank you for a great day. And I don't care if you're just watching this today. Tomorrow, a month from now. A week from now. Or a year from now. I love every single freaking one of you. And have you seen this movie? So Netflix has done... Just in general, though, when I look at movies that came out this year, they're fine. Nothing over the top just yet. So, fingers crossed, some badassery does occur.